In this video I'm going to show you how I made a box for my ATX power supply and my ramps board for my CNC router just to neaten up all that nasty tangle of wires. I'm also going to incorporate a fan right above the motor controllers to keep them cool. So I'm pretty happy because I haven't been on YouTube that long and I've already got a bunch of fans. I need to pick one that's going to fit pretty much over these chips because that's what's going to get hot. I've already put heat sinks on. This was all in my uh, video about the uh, CNC electronics. Um, so maybe that one's even a bit oversized. That one's that fits over the uh, over the chips pretty well, and also it's not. It pretty much is the same width as the board, so that one looks like a good one. It's important to add a fan before I start using the machine uh, in anger, um, just as a backup to these heat sinks. Um, most kind of little computer style fans have these arrows to tell you which direction the fan's going to rotate and which direction it's going to push the air. So I would have thought you wanted to push the air downwards into the box. Although actually I don't see whether it makes that much difference either way. I'm probably totally wrong. But I can always swap it round in whichever enclosure I end up making for this. First of all, before I do any designs, I want to make sure it actually turns on. So that can come off. That one, I think that's speed sensor wire. In some of the fans it's actually an activate wire, in which case I'm not going to bother, I'm just going to use a different fan because I can't be bothered working out how one of these things works. I just want to stick these into the uh, positive and negative. Didn't want to show you that step because I basically just bit the uh, I basically just bit the insulation off those wires. But essentially all I'm going to do is screw red one into one of these yellow ones, the black one into one of these black ones and see if that starts turning. So with those screwed in, it's a moment of truth. <laughs> the uh, wall plug was a little bit out. So that's great, I can use this fan. Um, I'm just going to cut that lead a bit short because I don't really need the yellow one. That would just be a speed sensor in this case. Just so that doesn't get in the way. I've just been working out how to uh, how to neatly mount my ramps and Arduino and fan with the power supply. Um, I think the best thing to do is to fit this on the back somehow and the fan kind of here um, facing outwards obviously um, probably need to cut off this nasty mess of wire so I'm probably just going to trim all of that back um, and try to prevent the uh, metal cores of the wires that I trim back from touching anything um, maybe just with a bit of electrical tape that means I'm just going to have these five wires, the yellow black and green um, to sort of wrap around or maybe trim these back too. So that'll be like that. That'll be there and with a kind of acrylic uh, housing around the whole thing. Um, and of course the stepper wires will have to kind of come out of the side of that acrylic housing somehow uh, and the end stops which will fit there. The easiest way to attach this on will probably be by unscrewing these bolts or machine screws rather here. These are just M3s. This will obviously be different depending on exactly what sort of ATX power supply uh, you manage to find if you try to copy this. I can just put in a slightly longer M3 bolt which will go through the M5 acrylic that I'm going to cut out now which will form a sort of bracket around the side 
and hold this sort of housing on. I then spent a couple of days measuring and thinking and undertaking other boring activities to create the box that you're about to see. So I couldn't be bothered filming myself cutting out and assembling this box. Um, but luckily, um, my friend Savas has taught me a trick which speeds these things up. Before I installed the ramps box on the ATX power supply, I trimmed back the wires as I described earlier on in the video. So first of all I had to remove the uh, top part of the housing. I separated out the yellow, black and green wires that I had connected to my ramps board and dipped them in a cup of tea. An interesting thing I found when once I'd opened this was that actually two of the yellow wires that I'd been using for the ramps were actually shared off a single wire coming from the main board. That could actually mean that the wires can handle less current so I decided to use two yellow wires coming directly from the board rather than uh, two sharing a single solder pad. So I vigorously detached all the wires uh, that I didn't need to connect to the ramps. I tried to trim them as close to the circuit board as possible so there wouldn't be any uh, kind of bare filaments of metal hanging around that could touch onto other components in there. First I threaded the remaining wires from the ATX power supply through the hole in the rear of my ramps box. I tried to attach the box to the power supply using M3 by 10mm bolts but the thread in the punched steel casing of the ATX power supply was really bad. It seemed to either be stripped or not really intended for machine screws. So I ended up using self-tapping screws for uh, I believe automotive use instead of these initial bolts. You can see it's just spinning and it's kind of pretty hopeless. It's not really biting into the thread at all. These were the screws that finally worked. They're a little bit fatter than M3. I guess there's no similar naming convention for screws. Next, I fitted my ramps board into the box. The recess to the bottom right of the box allows the USB to poke through the wall of the box um, whilst the bulge above it provides room for the power connector. I test fitted the wires and then cut them to the right length. I stripped the ends of the wires and screwed them back into the ramps power connector. I also threaded the fan wires through the hole in the grill on what will become the front of the box and also screwed those into the power connector. I plugged in the plug and shoved the whole lot into the box. I bolted the whole thing down with M3 by 20 mm bolts which self tap into holes laser cut into the base plate of the box. So I did finally decide to point the fan blowing air outwards, it just figured that you want to get heat and dust etc out of the box. The fan is screwed down with M3 by 20 bolts which also self tap into holes laser cut into the lid. 
I just powered up the whole thing without any CNC machine etc connected just to make sure the fan's working and also there's a little light that shows the Torino Arduino board is still happy. Eventually I'll buy proper plugs to connect the motors and end stop wires to the control box but for now I'm just going to use strip boards and header pins to connect the plugs that I already have. This row of 16 pins will form the motor connections. Four connections for each motor and of course the Y axis has two motors. I marked the holes in the strip board which were closest to the holes in the acrylic box and drilled them out to about 4mm. I soldered jumper wires to the strips corresponding to each pin. Each group of green, yellow, orange and red wires corresponds to the connections for one motor. The brown, black, white and grey wires correspond to the second Y motor so that I can easily tell that apart when I'm wiring the connections to the ramps board. Using M3 nuts and bolts I secured the strip board behind the hole in the acrylic box. Working through X, Y and Z axes I connected each group of four wires to the corresponding motor plug on the ramps board. I wanted to run the motor wires uh, to the right of the case so they would be far away as possible from the end stop wires just to reduce the possibility of any sort of crosstalk. This is the strip board for the end stops. The end stops share a common positive and negative connection so I didn't need to connect all three wires for all of the six end stops. The brown wire will carry five volts, the black wire is negative and the brighter coloured wires are the signal lines for each end stop. I plugged the end stop signal wires from the strip board into the ramps board end stop pins in reverse order to the way that they were on the strip board. So again the end stops are organised with X to the left moving to Y to Z which is the same way the motor connections are configured. To the right of the end stop connections I also soldered a strip of three header pin sockets which is also soldered to the end stop ground connection. I'm going to solder jumper wires to the motor cable shielding and plug those wires into that strip of three header sockets which will ground the shielding. Cable shielding is only effective if it's grounded. If it's not grounded it's basically just a bunch of metal that you wrap around a wire. Since I filmed this video I've tidied up all the wires on my machine added a few little extra essential parts and actually done a few test cuts. So please do check out my next video when I'm going to show how I connected this uh, ATX ramps control box to my machine and how I kind of perform those last little finishing touches to, to make it into a functioning machine. I hope you found this video interesting. I hope if you're using a ramps board with an ATX power supply you might actually cut my design out and use it yourself. I'm going to make the design files available uh, very soon along with a kind of digest of all the design files for my CNC router so far. If you did find this interesting please do like and subscribe if you want to see more in my series on uh, CNC routers. Uh, I'm sure I'll be tuning up the router and extending what it can do now that it's finished.